All right, friends, in this video, we are going to learn how to create VDCs. Uh, so I got a plain Nexus switch, which I just put it to a default VDC. And to the default VDC, I want to give it a name as VDC1. And then we will go ahead and create VDCs using the VDC names. The process takes some time, so I'm going to do Control C to break it so that in the background, the VDC creation process goes on so this is how you create VDC you just have to give the command VDC and VDC name and it will create a VDC for you in the background it's creating a completely different switch with its processes with its own OSPF and EIGRP and all layer 2 features like VLAN layer 3 features like VRF and uh, you know hundred more features out there all the virtualization features and everything else so these VDCs are now going to act as full flat switches so what we are going to do today is we will create multiple you know VDCs and we are going to see the communication between them and we will also see uh, what are the resources and how you know what are the resources can be assigned to VDC and how do we assign those resources the process of assigning <coughs> as we can see the VDCs are online now so we can go and do show VDC here okay right and let me check so we are seeing the what are the things we see here is the VDC names if you see the number VDC assignment number is default VDC is VDC 1 the one that we created VDC 2, 3, 4 is what we created. This was just the host name given to the default VDC. Okay. And these are the system MAC addresses. Those are assigned on their own. And we are going to see what is the use of these system MAC addresses in the when we do spanning tree or LSCP neighborships and you know a VPC, we are going to see the real benefit of these system MAC addresses out there. I want to do show VDC membership to see what are the interfaces available and then we'll do some practicals here okay so these are the interfaces where are the interfaces by default all interfaces are assigned to the default VDC so default VDC is this one any any interface which is not assigned to default and any of these VDCs which means if it is in the future you know it get removed it's gonna be in the VDC 0 so all interfaces which are not there in any of the VDCs in the future are going to be in the VDC 0 VDC which is unallocated interfaces now you can't delete VDC 0 and you can't delete VDC 1 you can convert it to admin VDC but you can't really delete these uh, two IDs VDC 0 and VDC 1 they are there and you can't really delete it all right, so now we go back and see what are the possibilities we have. We are going to pick up VDC2 because VDC1 already has all the interfaces. And we will first say module type. So we are going to limit resources, limit resource, and I'll say module type. And we'll see what kind of modules we have. So I'm going to give F1 and M1 module is what is my requirement here at this time okay so I'm limiting this VDC that it should not be using any F2 modules or any other module except F1 and M1 module and then I'm going to assign the physical interfaces to it so allocate interface and I'm just going to pick up some random interfaces here uh, maybe you know V3 I'll pick 1 to 20 and E4 again I'll pick 1 to probably 12 okay I have to really wait for it and we can go back here and we say E4 and 1 to 12 is probably I'm gonna pick up it's totally as per your design and topology you can pick up interfaces Okay, and we do show VDC now. So I'll show VDC, show VDC membership to see if those interfaces are assigned.
to the new VDC that's been created or not. So here are the interfaces that I wanted to pick up. The four module four interfaces are still not assigned. I think it's, a, it's in the process of assigning or there may be some mistakes. So we are going to check what's that. Okay, not yet. Let's see if we made a mistake there in assigning it. Okay, that's, that's a mistake itself. So, the beautiful thing is you can, sitting here, you can you know, solve those issues. So I wanted this to be 1 to 20, 1 to 20. Let's say yes. And I'll go back and I'll say E4 and 1 to 12 is was it what I wanted to assign. Alright, it's all good and uh, we go to VDC and VDC2 and there we'll say interface assignment. So here I have 12, so I'm going to pick up 12 to 24 here or maybe 13 to 20, 24, so I'm going to say no at this time. I want it because 12 is already given, so it's going to be 13 to 24, say yes. Go back to E3, and there we have 21 to 32. 21 to 32 is what I want to pick up. Okay, what are the other parameters that we can assign at this time? Well, quite a lot of stuff. So you can say limit resource. And you can choose, there, there are a lot of options in fact. So limit resource, you can you know, assign VRF, the, the number of VRF, you say minimum. And let's say I'm going to say 16 and maximum, I'm going to pick up any number kind of here. And same way you can assign number of fields. So, you know, depending on what kind of virtual switch and what are the resources you want to assign to it, you can assign the resources from there. Limit resource is the command. There is another command you can assign using VDC resource template. So the second way you can assign something here is, you know, so let's say I'm going to create a goal template here and I'll say remove limit resource, maybe VRF, okay, minimum 32, maximum 64. And I want to go back to VDC 4 maybe and I want to assign this uh, Sorry, I want to go to VDC4, which is already created. And so that's that's a good message. You know, you can see you cannot create more than four VDCs in the soup one. Soup 2E, you can create up to eight. Admin plus eight. Eight is your data forwarding VDCs and admin VDC. Okay, so here I created the VDC uh, resource template. All I have I need to say is VDC and the template name. So or the sorry, the template name, just the template name. I have to say and what was that that was cool so that's all you know so there are two ways you can either create resource there directly under the VDC or you can create a resource template and if you you know temp the, the purpose of templates always is that whenever you need to apply it more than one time it makes sense you know so if you have three VDCs you need to assign similar resources rather than going three times giving those command you can create the template once and apply to those three VDCs that makes much more sense uh, to do it there. Well, other command that I want to show you here is the boot order. Okay, the boot order is a command which decides if, let's say, in case the switch is rebooting because of any ABC reason and uh, you want certain VDC to take precedence at the time of booting, it, that you know, let's say in this case right now I'm sitting in VDC 4 and you want VDC 4 to be the first VDC at the time of booting, so you can say VDC boot, sorry, the boot order one. And the rest of the VDCs you can go up there and you can assign uh, boot order something else, higher number. So the lowest number is preferred. It will prefer uh, this VDC at the time of booting. So here if you look at it, by default all the VDCs have a boot order one, which means they are all going to start simultaneously, which may not be a great practice. You may have some production networks which are much more preferred over other virtual switches. So you can actually choose, uh, you know, uh, that option there.
Okay, the next command that we can do here is uh, we can see the VDCs in individual VDC details. Just show VDC and VDC, perhaps the name. I want to see more details about it. You can see more details. So, the another beautiful thing I want to show here is this policies. Okay, you can set up the HA policy. So, let's say it's right now I'm sitting in uh, uh, the default VDC. Okay, so now if you look at it, the by default policy here is reload if it's a single supervisor and if it's a dual supervisor, then switch over. Okay, now let's go back to system HA policy and we'll say system HA reset. Okay, so in, in the default VDC, there is a different way, but if you go to the uh, you know the no default VDCs you can go and give the command HA policies which we are going to do next but here you can't do the HA policy you have to do system HAP reset command okay now let's go back and see if it has changed anything that's a trick here okay if you look at it it has not changed anything even if you have given the reset word default VDC uh, policies can't really be changed so you have it's as if it's a single supervisor is going to reload if you have a dual supervisor is going to switch over so default policies you can't do much even if you say reset it's not going to take reset here means a reload actually okay there's no soft reset available it's going to be full reload of the supervisor if you have dual supervisor is going to be switch over now we can go to other vdc's known default vdc's as we call it and there you can say ha policies and you can choose an HA policy if it's a single supervisor let's say I want to say you know restart the VDC rather than you know uh, fully reloading the world uh, policy and if I have a dual supervisor then my policy should be uh, you know, kind of uh, switch over which makes more sense you know so if you have single supervisor and there is something goes wrong with the VDC kindly restart the VDC if you have a dual supervisor, you switch over to the second supervisor. Okay, so that's your HA policy. You can apply individually to uh, each uh, VDC there. All right, that's all for the VDCs here. And uh, after that, we are going to log in into these VDCs and we are going to do more practicals of uh, the communication between these VDCs. We'll have trunks and port channels layer, two port channels layer, three port channels and spanning tree which I'm going to show you in the next video. Thank you.